David Faraday of CBS Sports, joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show once again. How are you, David? Doing great. Thanks, Rich. So uh, you could see with Jordan Spieth when uh, he just wound up just – just left of the hole on 18, you could just see on his face or his face that was being hidden uh, by his hat that he pulled over his face that he just knew that there were so many opportunities on this course that he let get by and he, otherwise he could have had a shot at the Claret Jug. How, how did you see Jordan Spieth's week, David? Well, I, I think it's an indication, Rich, of, of just how good he is at the minute that, that he could play the way he did uh, at St. Andrews and, and still come within a shot of, of as you say, you know, uh, lifting that, that claret jug. Um, he, uh, just when he, you think he can't impress you anymore, um, he impresses you some more. Uh, although he didn't get it done this week, uh, it'll go down as, you know, one of the great performances in, in a calendar year of major championship history, I think. Uh, and particularly, of course, if he wins the PGA Championship. But the, even up to this point, it's been remarkable to watch. Yeah, he still has uh, history, obviously, that he can make because nobody's ever uh, swept all three American uh, Grand Slam championships. So he has a chance to do that by winning the PGA Championship. So uh, he, he, he does clearly have um, a lot of game, as we, we've seen at the top of his game right now. What, what makes him so good, David? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I've said this somewhere before, but I mean, his strength is he has no weaknesses. Um, he is just superb at absolutely everything. He's and he has the best attitude, I believe, uh, that I have ever seen on a golf course in, in my 40 years as a pro. I'm not sure that I've ever seen a mature player, a player of 40 years old, that has the the kind of golfing wisdom and the ability to get irritated and use that sort of anger to channel his energy in the right direction uh, he's wise beyond his years uh, and uh, he makes decisions uh, on the course that are uh, that are I mean superb his course management er everything about him is just great and I mean his attitude off the golf course uh, and the person that he is he makes the you know he even makes professional golfers look like criminals and that's quite an, an, an effort. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Zach Johnson is, uh, has, has spoken about what Spieth is like off the, off the course and how he's beyond his years in that regard as well. Uh, and we're going to be talking to Zach in about 55 minutes' time. Well, oh, what, what did Zach Johnson do uh, to, to win this tournament, uh, other than obviously score better than everyone else? But just watching his game over the, the four days at St. Andrews, what did Zach Johnson do, David, in your estimation, to win it? Zach is is uh, is one of those players that manages to stay under the radar. He doesn't sell himself, you know, particularly well. He doesn't need to. Um, he's he's not that sort of a character. Um, and people, you know, he's probably won some somewhere between thirty and forty million dollars in his career. He's he's won probably a dozen times. With, with, uh, he has a green jacket and not, not a, you know an open championship. He he won the the world's greatest golf tournament on arguably the world's greatest golf course, uh, at least uh, certainly as greatest venue. Um, St. Andrews to, to win it there is so special. Uh, there's nothing like playing, uh, in walking up that last fairway into the heart of the town, you know, surrounded by all that history, uh, you know, having played in what is essentially a, a graveyard, um, you know, a golf course that was created by accident, almost by sheep. You know, uh, burying or digging out those uh, hollows in, in the in the fairway that became bunkers. You know where they sheltered from from the from the weather. There, it's just a place that uh, it's magical. There's there's no other way to describe it. And you've got the Canadian Open this week. Any idea if Zach is going to be there this week, David? You know, I I don't know. Uh, I'm in Canada at the minute, but uh, hmm. I don't know if he committed. Um, uh, if if he did, he's the sort of player that would. He, uh, that would show up. Um, you know, he has that uh, Jordan Spieth in him, too. You know, if he says he's going to do something, that there's an extremely good chance that, that, that he'll do it. And then, it's on, and then it's on to uh, Whistling Straits for uh, the PGA Championship August 13th through 16th, which will also be on CBS. And that's a spot where everybody thought Dustin Johnson was going to win his first major. And then, uh, and then the, the hazard, non-hazard situation that you've discussed previously on this show happened. What do you think happened to Dustin Johnson this weekend, David? Well, he just had a day that, that can happen to anyone, um, you know, where, where you miss a couple early on, and then the hole starts to look smaller, and then you start trying harder and harder. And instead of letting it happen, you know, you try to make it happen, and then he gets frustrated, and it sort of, 
you know, it, it's one of those... Uh, it's one of those situations that Jordan has been so fantastic in getting himself out of. Uh, you know, he's been able to fix himself on the golf course, which is maybe the hardest thing to do in professional golf, is to get off to that start and uh, or, or have a patch in the middle and repair yourself in time to, to make a good score. And Dustin just wasn't able to do it. Yeah, I mean, it, it seems that whenever Spieth has a bad round, he bounces back in, in, a, in a big, bad way. And even after that that double bogey on eight, he went ahead and birdied the next two holes to get right back in. It is really is remarkable when you think about it, David. Yes, and he did that several times at the Masters earlier this year. Mm -hmm. I think uh, five or six times in a row uh, over two rounds. Uh, anytime he made a bogey, he birdied one or two of the next, you know, three or four holes. Um, he uh, he's able to use that frustration and and channel it into a, a more focused uh, uh, attitude. I think you know, and he, he just gets back on the horse quicker than anyone I've seen for a very long time. So, do you think Dustin Johnson has that potential in him coming back to the place where many people thought he got hosed back in 2010? Oh up? yeah. Uh, of whom I was one, incidentally. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll be interested to see whether those are bunkers or uh, waste areas this year, because if they're bunkers, uh, honestly, I think you have to keep the crowd out of them. Mm -hmm. um, it it uh, really it creates a situation in which, you know, really bad things can happen for, for not particularly good reasons. Um, it's. Uh, I, I think Dustin does have it in him. He plays so well, so often, that he's going to put himself in position. Um, and, uh, you know, once he gets through that door... I think that'll uh, make a big difference to him. He could win. He could win a few of these. David Faraday of CBS Sports and one of the more uh, entertaining uh, interview shows uh, on TV. Faraday on the Golf Channel joining me here uh, on the Rich Eisen Show. So uh, let's get to the tiger of it all, David. I give you the floor after what we saw at St Andrews. What do you think? Well, um, you know, he's. Uh, I was interested to hear his reaction to someone asked him uh, if he was going to retire, and he said he didn't have his double ARP card yet. Um, he's. Uh, He's too stubborn, and uh, he's in good shape physically now. Um, and um, he, he's as strong and as uh, obviously he's more talented. And people forget too, Rich, that he had all four of those trophies on his coffee table at one time, which is abs and people are saying, well, no, it wasn't in a calendar year. That's a crock. He had them all at the same time. Mm -hmm. That's the most remarkable feat uh, in in our sport. And um, he won a U.S. Open by 15, uh, a Masters by 12. He won British Opens by, by vast margins uh, as well. Um, it, it's just uh, it's a shame to see him play this way and for his anxiety, uh, you know, to become so precious to him, you know, that, that he has to hold on to it uh, instead of, uh, you know, allowing the game to, to come to him uh, and, and staying in the present. He, he's... Uh, he is kind of obsessed with, with the result for the first time in his career over the last few years. That's what's happened to him uh, and not paying attention to the actual physical act of what he's doing. So if he could get lost in that again, in the, in the present and just doing, uh, make a comfortable follow through. I tell people this all the time. Uh, it doesn't matter what level that you play at. If you can make a comfortable follow through in golf, which you can do on your practice swing, nobody ever screws up a practice swing. Mm -hmm. um, it's uh, and just make your practice swing, get comfortable, and let the ball get in the way. Well, then you find out where the ball goes when you make a comfortable swing. And after that, all you got to do is learn where to aim it. <laughs> it sounds so simple, <laughs> right? But just the mere, yeah, it is. But just the mere it fact is. That's that what these players do when they play well. But the mere fact that we're discussing this about Tiger Woods, when you went over his uh, his resume and how he's done things that nobody else has done or will ever do again, it really just it boggles the mind, David. It really does. That yeah, it, the it, it, it does, but that's the nature of the game. Um, and one of the, the really great things about it is it, it, it can happen to anyone. It doesn't matter whether you're Jack Nicklaus or Tiger Woods or Ben Hogan or whatever. They've all had you know, periods where people have thought, oh, well, maybe they've lost it. You know, and, and they don't generally last as long as you know, the one that Tiger is having. But, and I'm one of the few people on the planet, Rich, <laughs> remaining that, that thinks that, that Tiger Woods can come back. Um, I, I do. He's too stubborn and, and too, uh, you know, too talented. And, and, and his physical shape is good now. And he's playing so inconsistently that he can't play badly all of the time. Yeah, right. So maybe whistling straight is the spot. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On Audience.